Hi, I'm Tony Takeno, and I'm here with my good friend and co-founder of Journey Solo, Christine Castagnero. One of the things that Christine and I love is to travel. And one of the things that we love that goes right along with that is to talk to fellow travelers and to hear their stories and their tips and their tricks and their insider information. And we are very lucky today to be joined by an established solo traveler, a writer, a blogger, an entrepreneur, and somebody who just has a lot of information on this subject. Janice Waugh has been traveling solo since 2009 and traveling for much longer than that. She has a great blog, the Solo Traveler blog, and a series of Solo Traveler handbooks. We're very excited and honored that she would join us today and um, just kind of talk to us for a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just let Janice tell us a little bit about her background and how she got started. So thank you, Janice, and, and welcome. Well, thank you very much. So you want a little, you want the story as to how I became solo traveler, right? Okay, okay. Um, I uh, I started traveling at 15. I at 14 I started saving for my first trip. It was a cycling trip in England and Wales, and after that I never traveled with my family of origin again. So, well, actually I did when my mother turned 80. So it was a while. <laughs> Um, so travel has been part of who I am right from the beginning and uh, I've traveled solo, uh, family, couple, I've done, I've done the whole range. I've also done you know, short term and long term travel. In 2001, 2002 my husband and I and uh, our children, two of our children at least, um, went to Europe for 10 months. And I homeschooled the youngest, and uh, the other was in a, a Canadian school there, and we traveled. We traveled around. Um, but when we returned, my husband uh, was ill, we discovered, and he actually passed away in 2006. And that's kind of how I became solo traveler. Though there's a little bit more to the story. Um, grieving is not an easy process, and uh, this was happening exactly the same time as my children were leaving home or needing me much, much less. And um, so it was two years later, just over two years later, that uh, there's a very clear moment when Solo Traveler began my blog. Um, it was February. It was a miserable Saturday afternoon. I was sitting on the couch. I could feel the grief coming over me again. And this time I said no. And I thought to myself, I guess I'm traveling solo, and I have no idea where that came from. I picked up the computer beside me, um, which was always, of course, nearby, and Google Solo Travel. And uh, the first thing that came up, I didn't actually look past the first site. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I probably should have, or maybe I w shouldn't have, because I wouldn't have done anything. Um, the first site was full of spam, and I thought, no, this is wrong. I can do better than this. And uh, and so I thought about it for about 20 hours, 24 hours, and the next day I started Solo Traveler. So that's how uh, it all began. That's how I became uh, known as Solo Traveler. And of course, it was early days, so you know, on Twitter I could get the handle Solo Traveler, and you know, all this type of thing became was uh, was relatively easy for me. That's a that's a a really interesting story. There's so many wonderful things that happen out of really hard times in our lives. That's We've right. Here, but look how wonderful. Yeah. Your, this career is for you. Um, it's. it's it's so interesting. Your actual travel. Pardon yeah, it's, it's interesting what you say because this morning the Solo Travel Society is a group on Facebook. There's almost 17,000 solo travelers there right now, and um, the, the, I moderated and the post that I put up this morning for dis, for discussion uh, this morning, anyways, um, is from Juno Diaz. And Juno, one of his quotes that I love is like, uh, "It's the it's the." It's not the changes that you want that change everything, <laughs> right? So yes. sometimes you know you're trying after you're going after change to change everything, and it just doesn't necessarily work. But the ones that you don't want, man, they make big changes in your life. It's true. It's yeah. super true. I know one of the first questions that we wanted to ask you is kind of related. Um, can you tell us about one of the trips that you took that just started out completely? wrong and seemed to have no hope and you were able to turn around and do something really great? 
I'm, that's that's a hard thing to say because I've been traveling so long that um, uh, you know that doesn't really happen to me that often. I had you know you know my first day in Paris a couple of weeks ago it was miserable. It was rainy. It was you know like nothing was going right. Um, and then the next day everything went right. So you know I certainly have have trips like that. Um, but it's it's you know they don't really things don't don't shake me. So I was in Chile um, going to Patagonia on the Navimag ferry and um, it crashed. It uh, hit an island of all things. <laughs> and that was pretty darn scary, right? Um, but uh, you know, you just kind of bounce back and go, okay, well that was that. And that doesn't mean the, that colors the rest of your trip. So to give you a story of you know a trip that started out all wrong and then turned right, it's a tough thing to do because um, those things that go wrong happen intermittently within trips and uh, don't usually happen at the the beginning. At least, you know, not at this stage. And I, you know, it is one of the things that um, one of the pieces of advice that I give solo travelers is, you know, to be patient. And it's solo travelers taught me a lot about patience and. You know, every time I land in a new city, I'm still uncomfortable. It still takes me time to figure it out. So it's always, you know, just give yourself time, 24 hours, and whether it's a good day or bad day or anything in between, give yourself time and it will sort itself out. So I'm not quite answering your questions, but I'm kind of tackling the, the question in different ways. <laughs> well, that's really interesting because, um, you know, when I have found in traveling that I run up against something like that, I often will either email somebody or often Christine or um, refer back to a story that I've heard or something like that that kind of bounces me out of those little moments. You're right. There are intermittent moments within a, a trip that jar you for a moment that you just kind of bounce back out of or you figure your way out of. Um, and what I have found, especially in sharing these travel stories with Christine, is that um, I do have a few people who I kind of consider inspirational when it comes to travel, when it, who I consider my travel kindred spirits in a way. When you really started going down the path of concentrated solo travel, did you find that you had an inspirational person or some people or a person that you considered your travel kindred spirit? Uh the, the the woman that I admire most is uh, Evelyn Hannon of Journey Woman. Uh, mm -hmm. She's she's just she's been doing this for years and years and years. She came to it like me um, out of uh, out of crisis, right? And um, she's now in her seventies, and she's still traveling. She's a dynamic, energetic, thoughtful, uh, you know, courageous woman. And uh, so, yeah, she's she's the one that comes to mind. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. we know her. We know uh -huh. of her. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. She's yeah. lovely. She's another Toronto-based uh, person, uh, Toronto-based traveler. There's lots of us here, and uh, so I have the pleasure of of seeing her frequently. But I should also mention, you know, my mother uh, and um, my sister's mother-in-law, because the two of them, in you know, at 80 and 82, they were like they were off. You know, traveling along themselves. So, um, you know, I guess, you know, in a sense, it's usually the, the women that, that uh, are ahead of me in terms of age. You know, I look and go, okay, this is not short term. This is this can, is something that uh, that can be lifelong. I um I have an aunt who was in her 90s when she decided to take a Winnebago up to northern Canada to count geese. And I remember thinking, I want to be just like that. I love it. I yeah, love it. That is unbelievable. Yeah. And um, my my favorite stories when I travel are the things that people probably wouldn't believe actually happened. Have you ever had any really surprising or funny things happen while you've been gone that you thought the people at home will never believe this? Well, you know, I've actually been on two ships that crashed, so that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, you know, the last time I, you know, the third time I was actually on a uh, on a ship, uh, I was at the captain's table on the final evening, and when we got into port, I told him, I said, "Okay, we're good." <laughs> you gotta understand, the last two I was on crashed, so this is good. 
<laughs> but um, yeah, in terms of things, uh, you know, there's always lots and lots of little things. Um, but you know, usually it's the it's the kind of the quirky ways that the the quirky people that I meet, the quirky ways that I meet them, that um, that are the things that you know make really great stories. I was at um, I was in uh, St Andrews by the Sea, New Brunswick, and uh, this is a really small town. It's a very cute town on the sea, obviously, and. Uh, it, you know, with it being so small, usually when in, in a small town, you can kind of meet the characters, and the characters range. You know, they can be people you want to meet, and they can be people you really don't want to meet. Anyways, in, in St. Andrews, I was in a shop, and it occurred to me that the shopkeeper would likely know um, the character about town. And I asked, and and she told me, Jamie Steele is the guy you want to meet. Um, and uh, so I said, well, where? And she said she just kind of stepped out the door of her shop to point out the pub where he would be that night and wasn't he walking in and it was in the afternoon and so I just walked over to the pub walked in and I put my hand out to you know Mr. Steele and I said I understand I should know you <laughs> and he was he was a little taken aback just for like just a flash because he knew very well that he was the guy right so it wasn't a big deal but um yeah, so uh, so a local boy. He's the, this Jamie Steele is the guy that that uh, brings music to town and sends local artists out. And that night, a uh, local boy um, was on his way through town, was stopping in with a Grammy award-winning musicians. They would just come from Nashville, and I was invited back to hang out with the band. And it was just an amazing evening. It was just an amazing evening. So that you know, things happen that um, that. Uh, because you're alone, right? Uh, uh, people step up, and 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 exciting things happen that just don't happen otherwise. Right. right. You know, I I have read and have, and actually I would have it here, but I lent out your solo traveler's handbook, and I haven't gotten it back yet. But I know exactly who has it. Um, <laughs> one of the in your very the very beginning, one of the things you mentioned that's an excellent tip and it stuck with me for a very long time is that when you land somewhere and you're traveling solo to make sure you land with enough daylight to get wherever it is that your first stop is going to be to get mm -hmm. to your hotel with enough daylight so you're not navigating this new terrain in the dark in a new neighborhood or whatnot and um, I'm sure that came that knowledge came to you after you did once land um, with not enough time to get to your hotel or your hostel right. um, with enough daylight left. Is there a particular challenge that stands out to you where you just you really learned a lesson or you really learned something very specific about yourself? Well that I mean that was that was a huge lesson that specific uh, experience. Um, I was in Havana being Canadian um, going to Cuba is a pretty easy you know scenario and um, what happened is that I arrived around 11, 1130 at night and when I booked the flight it never occurred to me this is my first solo trip since my 20s you know with all the family and all the rest of it and it didn't occur to me that that was going to be a problem um, took a taxi from the airport and my hotel was in Old Havana and on a walking like a just a, a pedestrian area so my taxi just stopped far from my hotel like and just pointed because I didn't I don't speak Spanish I speak French and um, and there I was alone at night in the dark in a poorly lit area mm -hmm. of Old Havana and Old Havana if you've ever been there it's it's very um, it's it's very sketchy some parts are really gorgeous and some parts are really bad and it's not a matter of you know uh, blocks of the same thing. No, you'll have you know, something that's decrepit besides something that's gorgeous, besides something that's decrepit, it's just like it's all a mixture. And um, so I had to walk down this very dark uh, pedestrian, narrow pedestrian, poorly lit space and uh, pulling, my, pulling my roller bag and of course it's going over cobblestone and making tons of noise, it's echoing off the buildings and I was feeling very vulnerable to say the least. And um, because electricity is valuable, uh, my hotel wasn't even lit up. 
So I walked right by it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was getting really anxious. Fortunately, I ran into a security guard who backtracked me, and I and I found the place. But what a what a lesson, what a lesson. And that's that's exactly where that comes from. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, it's, it's an important one. Like I said, that has stuck with me. It was one of the first stories I read in in your handbook, and um, the one that stands out the most for sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's, there's, there are a lot of things, you know, I, I, in my 20s I was traveling solo and I was in a very dangerous situation in, um, in Paris and the only reason that I survived that situation very well is that I stayed in a public place. Mm. And so that is actually my number one uh, safety rule, is that public is safer, safer than private, stay in a public place mm. because eyes on you protect you. Right. Do you think that you could offer us, to kind of wrap up our talk story session, do you think you could offer us a little bit of personal advice to people who dream of traveling the world but just haven't done so yet because something is stopping them and don't always even know necessarily what's you know stopping you from going after that dream, but personal advice, not necessarily a travel tip, but um, how to overcome whatever it is that's finding that. Excuse me, hold on. Oh no. My phone is <laughs> perfectly fine. Don't I'm worry. Sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm just glad it was you, not me. <laughs> um, okay, personal advice. Um, there's two sides to the travel issue here, right? There's the issue of being by yourself, and there's the issue of travel. And mm -hmm. it can be either one that is actually stopping someone. Mm -hmm. The idea of being out on them, you know, on their own, responsible for everything themselves, um, or to actually enjoy their own company, mm -hmm. right? These are things that can stop someone from traveling. Um, then there's the issue of the unknown, right? How do I how do I do this or, or that or the next thing? How do I navigate? So, um, you know, either case, just baby steps. Just you know, like go to the next town, go to another city that's close, go to the, go to something that's similar, or at least culturally familiar, mm -hmm. to experience the fact that you can spend time by yourself. You will figure out, you know, what you want to do. <laughs> you won't be sitting there looking at walls. Right, um, that uh, pretty well. You know, people use money to buy the same things. You get food in restaurants. You get food in grocery stores. You will not go hungry. Right. You sleep in hotels. It's all pretty standard. And it's until you get out there, you don't realize just how similar everything is. And um, while you go some places and it, and it gets more difficult, you know, when there's a language barrier or there's a cultural difference and things of this nature, it, you know, there is a universality. There's a smile, right? People, people smile everywhere. And you can win people over and, and gain their help by, by smiling. So, you know, it is that baby steps. It is that realization just how... Um, how easy it actually can be, but until you explore a little bit, you won't know that you can explore a lot. And uh, and then you know you can just keep on going. Is that kind of what you were thinking in terms of? Yeah, yeah, very good. And I'm glad you took it from both angles. Um, we run into people like that all the time, and uh, and watching you and Evelyn and the other people on the internet that have shared their personal stories has been so inspirational to Tony and I and we already travel we want to do more and it's just so such a wonderful wonderful gift you can you know if you if you can give it to yourself I obviously highly encourage everybody to do it yeah I think you know I think it's a gift to yourself and I think it's also a gift to those that are at home um, you know, traveling by yourself, you, you go out into the world, you discover who you are, you discover your own rhythms, your own interests, when you're not being, um, you're not accommodating others, right? So that's really important. When you do that, you come back home and you have all these exciting stories to tell that you wouldn't have otherwise had to tell. You have grown as an individual, you've learned things about yourself that you can share either with your children, your friends, your partner, whomever. 
So, you know, it's just really important that the whole idea of travel is very important on a personal level. And then taking it on, you know, the more generalized the value of travel level, um, it's just really important that we go out into the world to understand it better and come home and be better world citizens at home as well as out there. So I, th I think that, you know, it's just really important travel is and solo travel is very important. Even if, you know, if you don't travel by yourself all the time, travel by yourself sometimes because you will learn things that uh, you didn't know. So true. Just in the last couple minutes, there have been snippets, things that you've said that we could pull out and quote, and I'm sure at some point we will. But that kind of leads us to the end, which is, do you have a favorite travel quote? Is there something that kind of rings in your head as <laughs> something that you really like? I know Christine has one that she really likes, and I, I have one that I really like. Just like one-liners that we like about travel. Is there something for you that just kind of rings true that you've heard along the, along the way? There are so many. There are so many, right? Um, but there's one by Catherine Hepburn that's not particularly about travel, but it is about solo. It is about you know, caring for yourself. And uh, I'm not going to quote it correctly. But it's something like, do what interests you, and then at least one person will be happy. I love it. I love it. So it's just really, um, it's really important that uh, you, know, you pursue your own interests. And usually what happens is that other people are, you know, share them. That is Thank so you, Janice. This has been a delight. Tony, I'm tickled. <laughs> but we've been looking forward to this for a long time. A long time. We Thanks. have struggled to get this organized, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being patient with us and thank you oh. for you know, not giving up on Google Hangout. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for your patience as well because of my travels did, did interfere for a while there. Oh, okay. we'll do anything to accommodate travel. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay, Janice, a really warm aloha from Hawaii. Oh, thank you. And uh, it's not quite so warm here, but uh, <laughs> warm regards to you, both of you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye.